Hi. For this week's tutorial, we're going to explain the sub-evenly macro. This is a useful node to help solve a particular problem that's best explained with an example. Let's imagine we're creating this picket fence. The setup is pretty simple. You just need three objects, one for the posts, one for the pickets, and one for the horizontal rails. To make these components into a complete parametric object, you just follow these steps. So first of all, create a new rail clone object, open the style editor, and add a new L1S generator. Create a new spline node and connect it to the generator's input. Pick a path from the scene, and we're ready to add geometry. So add a segment node, and then pick the post geometry from the scene. Go into the settings and change the deform mode to stepped so that the posts will remain upright even on undulating splines. You should turn off deform too to prevent the posts from bending unnaturally to follow curved splines. We want to add these posts at regularly spaced intervals. No problem, that's what the evenly input is for. So we'll wire the segment node to the evenly input and then you can change the spacing using the generator's rules evenly distance parameter. You should also wire the post to the start, the end and the corner inputs. To prevent the post from rotating on the corners, disable align to path from the generator's rules corner settings. And whilst you're in the generator's properties, change bevel mode to none or reset. This will stop the default segment from being mitered on the corners and force a full segment to start in each new section. And now we want to add the pickets, but we're already using the evenly input and pickets need to be spaced at regular intervals too. Well, that's where the sub-evenly macro can help out. It can space default segments at regularly spaced intervals in between the corners and the existing evenly items. And to use it, all you need to do is to go to the Macros tab and find the sub-evenly macro in the Transform group. Once you've found it, drag it to the graph and wire it to the default input. Add a second segment node and pick the picket geometry from the scene. Change the deform mode to stepped and turn off deform too. We'll change the segment's Y alignment to bottom to move it to one side of the center line. Later on, we'll add the rails and set the value to top to put it on the other side of this center line. But before we do that, wire the picket to the macro's sub-evenly input, and then wire the post to the macro's post input. Segments wired to the scaled default input will be stretched between the segments in the evenly input. But if, as in this case, you just want gaps, you don't want geometry, then connect a new segment node, but don't select any geometry. In rail clone terminology, we call these null segments. And that's it. You can now adjust the spacing of these pickets using the macro's railing spacing parameter. And you can control the posts using the generator's evenly distance parameter. There's one final thing though, for the macro to calculate correctly for the first and the last evenly segments, the post's segment X alignment needs to be set to center. So one part's still missing, which is the horizontal rails. To add those, we'll add another generator. So just create a new generator and connect the same spline node to its input. Add the third and final segment node and pick the railing geometry from the scene. Change the segment's Y alignment to top to move it to the other side of the center line. And then change the Z alignment to pivot to use the source geometry's pivot position to move the segment up and into the correct place. Change the deform mode to vertical. This will allow it to follow undulating splines while keeping the verticals upright. All done. Test the style by applying it to different splines. And if you want it to follow a landscape, you can also add a surface node and wire it to both generators. When you use this to pick a surface, the fence is automatically projected onto the terrain. And then finally, if we just add a few of the presets that come with Forest Pack, we get our final scene. 
I hope you're enjoying these regular tutorials and you stay tuned for more explanations of how to use Railclone and Forest Pack's built-in macros and effects. Mm -hmm.